Hoppa Day, everybody. Welcome once again to the friendly confines of Cowboy Ninja on beautiful Tumon Bay. I'm Jason Salas, your proud host to bring you yet another fun-filled and information-packed episode of KUM Brains and Brews, our trivia series where we are thinking and we're drinking. Not necessarily in that order. So we're going to have a lot of fun here. We have two teams right now that are in the same line of work, but things are going to get a little bit heated, I would assume, because we have here Team Custom Fitness. Hoppa Day, guys. What's the up? captain of which is a very good friend of mine, somebody who has been in the fitness business for a long time, Logan Rages. What's up, Logan? What's up, Jason? Good okay. to see you. And if you could uh, introduce the members of your team, please. Sorry. Uh, so behind me is Richard Cutdu Rages. This is Mike. I'm an attorney, Gatewood. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam. Tao Tao Tinian Sablon. <laughs> and uh, Nina living my best life, Clarice. Very nice. Okay, and, and then just to, met, just to make sure we practice diplomacy, uh, judges, did they get any additional points for the cool, like, nicknames? Yes. No. Unfortunately <laughs> not, right. but well, well done. Nicely played. Okay, and then we also have Team CrossFit Ladison. Half a day, guys. And it would seem like they brought a little bit of crowd support with them, so we'll see if that weighs in their favor. But uh, AJ is the team captain. AJ, who you got? All right, so um, I got over here Coach Jason. got Brett the Jet. Uh, Ariel the Strong. And Justin Barana. Very nice. Okay, once, once again, in the interest of fairness, judges, they kind of went with like a Game of Thrones nickname thing. Any, any credit for that? No. Okay, okay we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. So at least to get things started, we have got the ceremonial KUM Brains and Brews um, quarter here. So I'm going to go ahead and fly. I'm not even going to try and catch this thing because it's week three. I haven't been able to so far. So uh, Logan, your choice. Um, Heads or tails? Wait a minute. Okay. Tells. I, I know your glasses aren't that thick. Wow. Okay. Once again, okay, Logan, call it. I'll call her heads. Okay, he calls heads. And the coin says tails. Lost already. So, CrossFit Laddie Stone <laughs> does have the honor of picking first, and your categories, gentlemen, are sitcoms of the past, United States cities, world geography, song divas, international cuisine, and reality television. You guys have the honor of picking first. And remember, this is a half hour show. Right. Uh, world geography, please. Okay, world geography. So here we are, round one. We have five questions. All of these team, both of these teams are going to answer to the very best of their ability, and they will be jotting the um, answers down on their iPads. They get 30 seconds to confer amongst themselves. And are you guys ready? Ready. All right, Custom Fitness, you guys ready? ready? All right, here we go. World Geography, question number one. In which state is Mount Rushmore located? In which state is Mount Rushmore located? Okay, you have 30 seconds. Oh, we'll get it. It's okay, it's just a score. Your, your handwriting sucks. So the question once more, Mount Rushmore is in the United States. Which United States has Mount Rushmore? Okay, your time is up and let's go to CrossFit Laddie Stone first. Gentlemen, what do you say? We they, have, uh, South Dakota. South Dakota is correct. That's interesting, because we also got South Dakota. Okay, so cut. Okay, Custom Fitness also wrote South Dakota, decided the penmanship wasn't up to par, and then wrote South Dakota again. So, very nice. Okay, so, okay, please, please clear the iPads. Just hit undo a buttload of times. And let's go to topic, question number two. What is the largest desert in the world? What is the largest desert in the world? You have 30 seconds. How do I do this? Spelling does count, that is correct. So once again, the largest desert in the world, what is it? It seems like the teams are very, very confident about their answers. And let's go to uh, Team Custom oh. Fitness. And what do you have, Logan? Uh, we went with Sahara. 
The Sahara Desert is correct. All right, sweet. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, now CrossFit. We also went Sahara. They also had Sahara. Very nice penmanship, by the way. So after the first two questions, both Custom Fitness and CrossFit Laddie Stone have tied the score at two to two, which brings us to question number three. What is the smallest continent in the world? There are seven continents if you played the game Risk. One of them, not so big. What is the smallest continent in the world? You have about 25 seconds now. The smallest continent in the world is question number three. All right, the time, so let's go to right, team so, so CrossFit Laddie Stone and your answer for what is the smallest continent in the world? Yeah, we're going with Europe. They said Europe, mm. that is incorrect, I'm sorry. Ooh. Europe is a very good band from the 80s, the final countdown, but that is incorrect, unfortunately. For the record, I was right. <laughs> okay, but well, they also said wrong. Europe, so that is also incorrect. And Okay, audience, what, does anybody in the audience know what the smallest continent in the world is? Australia, down under, that's correct. Technically speaking, in the same time zone as Guam. If you ever set up a new computer, they say Guam, Port Moresby, everything. Yeah, it's Brisbane. Australia. Okay, so the score is still tied 2-2, two to two, which brings us to question number four. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the Scandinavian country that lies between Norway and Finland? Can I get the name of the Scandinavian country that lies between Norway and Finland? Question number four, I need the name of the Scandinavian country that is between Norway and okay. Finland. All right. And it seems like the teams are decidedly more confident about this answer. And your time is up, so. Oh, is it me first? Yeah, Kristen, right. what do you got? Uh, we went with Sweden. Sweden is correct. Danke, danke. Really good meatballs in Sweden. Okay, and could the score be tied at 3-3? And that's correct. Sweden, yeah. CrossFit Laddiestone also had Sweden, so the score is tied at 3-3, which brings us to the fifth and final question of round one. Will anybody pull ahead? Let's see. Your fifth question, what body of water is situated between Asia and Africa? 30 seconds, please. What body of water is situated between Asia and Africa? I think I heard somebody from the audio studio audience say, man, this is hard, miss. <laughs> Team CrossFit Laddie Stone may be at a little bit of an impasse. Less than 10 seconds to go. Your time is up. So let's go to Team Custom Fitness. And your answer was for the body of water situated between Asia and Africa, they said, the Indian Ocean. The Indian Ocean is incorrect. Gosh. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I, I'm judging by the laughter that CrossFit Laddie Stone also said Indian Ocean, which did it, but that is incorrect. Anybody in the audience know? It is the Red Sea. Yeah, the judge said the Red Sea. John said the Mediterranean. Red Sea? Well, it has been very, very competitive sorry, so we far. The wrong, score bro. is tied 3-3. Please stay too, because when we come back, we have another category and more coming up right now. Welcome back everybody to KUM Brains and Brews from Cowboy Ninja here on beautiful Tumon Bay where the beer is cold and the calamari is very, very spicy. The score is tied right now between our two teams, both from the CrossFit domain. We have Team Custom Fitness and Team CrossFit Laddie Stone. Both teams are at, tied at 3-3. So Logan, I know you made some uh, roster changes. Who have you got? Uh, we have Lauren Outrageous. 
And my workout partner who hasn't shown up to the partner wads, King Cook. Very, very nice. So some strategy going on right here, right now from uh, Custom Fitness, bringing in the big guns. They went to the St. John's kids. All right. Okay, now for Team CrossFit Light Zone. Who have you guys got? Okay, we got John Atten and James. Very cool. One. Okay, so Team Custom Fitness, um, you guys, or wait, yeah. yeah. You guys have the honor of picking the category. So the categories that are remaining are sitcoms of the past, United States cities, song divas, international cuisine, or reality TV. Once again, sitcoms of the past, US cities, song divas, international cuisine, reality TV. I might add that Logan was at one point and probably still is a food blogger. Um, Jason, we're gonna go with international cuisine. International, oh, what a shocker. All right. Right on cue. Okay, so here we go. With the score tied 3-3, we are looking at the international cuisine topic. And question number one is, what is a Filipino spring roll called? And if you're playing along at home, you probably had the same reaction as the crowd. Oh, come on! <laughs> what is a Filipino spring roll called? Question number one. Totoro. <laughs> Seemed like both teams knocked this one out within the first five seconds. And time is up right now, so team Custom Fitness, what oh, have we got? Hey, uh, we went with Lumpia. They lumpia went with Jason. Lumpia, and they had a nice little drawing beneath it. Lumpia is correct. Thank you. So one point for Custom Fitness. CrossFit Laddie Zone also says Lumpia, which is also correct. Lumpia. The score remains tied at four points apiece. This brings us to another part of the world and another dish. This leavened oven-baked flatbread or leaven, depending on where you went to school. This leavened oven-baked flatbread is used as a dipping bread for saucy dishes such as curries. What is this called? This leavened oven-baked flatbread is used as a dipping bread for saucy dishes such as curries. What am I speaking about? International cuisine. Yes. Good answer. Awesome. There's a little bit of a debate here over shupao. I'm not sure if that was a menu request or it was. Okay, so let's go to team CrossFit. Laddie Stone, his team is up, and you said well, Nan, well. and they also draw a very nice picture of it. Well done. That is correct. Yes. Woo! Woo! Good answer. Nah. -on. And nah. -on even. And they use the uh, the Chamorro emphasis. Nah. -on. Nah. -on. Very nice. So the score is now tied five to five, which brings us to question number three. All right. Harbo, char su bao, xiao mai, and jian dui are all types of this Chinese food served in wooden baskets. What am I talking about? Harbo, char su bao, xiao mai, and jian dui are all types of the Chinese food served in wooden baskets. My apologies if I mispronounced any of those words. I'm that guy who goes to the drive-thru in fast food restaurants five days a week. 10 seconds. Okay, let's go to Team Custom Fitness. And your answer, sir? Ni hao. We went dim sum. He said dim sum, and dim sum is correct. Yes, thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Team Appreciate CrossFit Ladison, a team Custom Fitness earned one point. They have 6 5 right now. You said dumpling. Uh, judges, is dumpling and dim sum interchangeable? No, they're not. Our, our expert judges, who I may say, I may say, may or may not have studied at the Culinary Institute of Wikipedia. So, what do you say? No, I'm sorry, dumpling is not acceptable. So that means the score is now Custom Fitness pulling ahead with one point, six to five. All right, let's go to question number four. Oh, CrossFit can still tie the score. Good answer. Good answer. Question number four. This Mediterranean dip 
is made from mashed garbanzo beans, tahini, olive oil, lemon juice, and garlic, among other ingredients. It's a Mediterranean dip made from mashed garbanzo beans, lahini, olive oil, lemon juice, and garlic, among other things. Oh yeah, well I make this at home. Alton Brown's recipe, boom, in your face. Oh hey, sorry, we just had it. Spelling counts, right? Huh? Spelling does count. The judges will be looking at spelling with impeccable detail. And so let's go to CrossFit Laddie Stone. And you have, they said hummus. Hummus is correct. And they also drew a colored picture of hummus. Very, very nice. So the score, at least for the moment, is tied 6-6, unless Logan and CrossFit Fitness can also answer hummus. And Custom Fitness. Custom Fitness. What did I say? CrossFit Fitness. Oh, sorry. Custom Fitness. Hummus is correct. Not to be confused with at, at least at least one of us got the name right, Which is and that was certainly you guys. All right, for the fifth question with Custom Fitness tied or leading is seven to six. Question number five: Pho, ramen, and gazpacho are different types of what food? Pho, ramen, and gazpacho are different types of food. Evidently, our interns made up the questions for this category. So Custom Fitness is leading at seven to six. Can we head into our second break with the score tied? Pho, ramen, and gazpacho. They belong to a certain category of food. Custom Fitness, your answer, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, they're, they're types of soup. Soup is correct. Okay, CrossFit, okay, they actually said noodles soup, referring to a specific type. Uh, judges, what do you say? Huh? But is that soup? That is, that will be acceptable. You show me a noodle gazpacho soup. And you are a fan of CrossFit Laddie Stone. You breathe a huge sigh of relief because we are going into our next break with Custom Fitness. Oh, yes, ma'am. We gotta be stopped being so detailed. Gazpacho does well, not we, have noodles. We will take a look at that. Uh, Judges, can we? Chicken or beef? <laughs> does Gazpacho actually have noodles in it? Either or. It's a soup. Hey, it was ruled right, bro. You could put we'll wait. Our expert judges are consulting amongst themselves and using their years and years of culinary experience. And by that, I mean they're Googling like hell. We made the call right. You could? Okay, so uh, I'm sorry we have an overturned score. Oh. Noodle soup is not acceptable. So the wow. score now is Custom Fitness up by two points, eight to six. Stay tuned because when we come back, we have a guest picker that's going to pick the third and final category. Woohoo! Can CrossFit Laddie Stone catch up? Stay tuned for Brews and Brains. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back, everybody, to KUM Brains and Brews, where we think and we drink, and it is a very, very contentious round three. Good competition so far, where our friends at Custom Fitness have the score of eight, CrossFit Laddie Stone six. Sportsmanship all around, obviously. And, oh, and over the commercial break, we actually had a guest picker. Ryan Claris picked um, the category of Song Divas. So we had a celebrity picker. And so, <laughs> CrossFit Laddie Stone, you have two points to either tie or break, break the tie. So, ladies and gentlemen, please clear your iPads. Here is first question for Song Divas for round three. This pop diva's first of many hits was Vision of Love in 1990. Who am I talking about? Louder. 
This pop diva's first of many hits was Vision of Love in 1990. Spelling does count. Uh. Hey, don't cheat. Don't cheat. Just a very quick point. Halsey was not alive in 1990, if you were thinking about that. Adele. All right, time is up. Let's go to Custom Fitness. What have you got? Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. Very good. That is correct. Not to be confused. So they have now have nine points. We also are first. CrossFit Laddie Stone also said Mariah Carey. Good answer. Very good. Yeah, apparently it rhymes with Carey. Nine to seven. Question number two. Let's talk about some thespianism for some song divas, shall we? Which diva you call me? both acted in and had a hit song on the soundtrack of the film Waiting to Exhale? This diva played a role in and had a sound song that was a hit on Waiting to Exhale. Did I smell it? All right, and time is up. CrossFit Laddie Stone, your answer, please. They said Whitney Houston is correct. She also, she also set the car on fire, which was a very good scene. All right, uh, what have you got, Logan? Shoop, shoop, doo. Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston with the thick, the thick, uh, thick pen font. Very nice. That is correct. So the score is now 10 to 8. CrossFit Lightstone finds itself still down by two points. Three oh. questions remain. It is still mathematically point. possible to take over. <laughs> if you all would like to say the rosary, you've got 10 seconds. <laughs> there you go. Technically, they're on the third sorrowful mystery already, so very nice. All right, question number three. Which diva has her own beauty, lingerie, and luxury wear brand named Fenty? for her actual last name. Which diva? Good answer. Which diva has a brand of her own sexy lingerie? Good answer. Spelling does count. The the judges are very very much sticklers for spelling. Time is up. Custom Fitness, your answer, please. Uh, time is up, I'm sorry. Uh, we answered Rihanna. Okay, judges, they, they, they said Rihanna after time had expired, but they drew spaghetti. Spelling does count. I th wait, I th you know what, okay. Can we get Sherelle to come up here? Sherelle, please, because we're going to need you to verify this, uh, this spelling. It didn't work. The pen wasn't working. See, you can see. You can see us pressing it. It wasn't working. Okay, given the fact that there was only one, I'm sorry, that is incorrect, given yeah. the spelling. Hey, don't delight in our, no. So that means the score is now 10 to 8 still. Team CrossFit, and is the spelling correct? On yes. The spelling is incorrect. What? The correct answer is, what, can you, if you would, hold up your iPad, please. The correct the correct answer is Rihanna, but that's R-I-H-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. So Team CrossFit Laddie Stone let one get away from him. Team Custom Fitness just dodged a major bullet. Let's go on to, huh? It is uh, two ends, yeah. And they actually got the I and the H backwards. All right. Let's put it behind you. Wipe it from your memory and wipe your iPads, please, because we have question number four. Which diva headlined Coachella with a homecoming theme stage show in 2018? She headlined the Coachella Fest with a homecoming themed stage show in 2018. <laughs> With an H. 
Five seconds left. And the time is up, so let's check in with Custom Fitness. Uh, uh, we went with Beyonce. Beyonce, okay, Beyonce, and they also have the accent over the E. Oh. That is acceptable. In your face. Well done. Wow, pretty good. 11 points. Okay. Queen Bay. CrossFit also put, okay, CrossFit drew a crown and they also put Queen Bay. Queen Bay. They're, they do have the accent. They do. That looks like a flea. Very nice. So the score is now 11 to 9. That spelling on Rihanna really came in making huge impact here. Okay, fifth and final question for round three. This diva burst on the scene as a teen with her video for Oops, I Did It Again. Who is she? And if... And if you don't know this, just walk up to JFK. Don't even take your car. This diva burst on the scene as a teen with her video for Oops, I Did It Again. Who is she? Okay, so Team CrossFit Laddison, your answer, please. They said Britney Spears. Britney Spears is correct. Woo! Good answer. Good answer. So Team CrossFit Laddison is going to finish the three rounds of play with ten points. And Team Custom Fitness, you said? Uh, we went with Ryan Claris. Ryan Claris. Yes. Dr. Hands. What? He sings Oops, okay, I Did It Again. Okay. He sings it uh, yeah, every day in the box. Two-part response. One, that is incorrect. But two, that is funny as hell. Yeah. Sing it, Ryan. Show well him. done. Okay, so the score is 11 to 10. So, Custom Fitness is the victor. Please give a round of applause for CrossFit Ladison. Very, very well played. Please stay tuned, everybody, because when we come back, we have our lightning round. Yes. And one member of Team Custom Fitness is going to be playing for beer. Stay tuned. That's going to be exciting. Yes. We're back in. everybody, here we are, KUM, Brains and Bruce. It has all come down to this. The victor, as they say, gets these spoils, and the very lovely Sam has been elected, chosen, voluntold by your team. Forced. 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 Oh, yeah, chivalry is not dead, gentlemen, no, truly. It's, it's dead. Okay, well, Sam is going to play on behalf of her team, and I'm going to ask you one category, one brand new category that you did not see, and you have, to, you have 20 seconds to come up with as many correct answers. For every correct answer, you will win a beverage. Yes. You, you can share these with the members of your team. No. You, there you go. <laughs> Chivalry is dead and sharing is not caring, apparently. Okay. So, Sam, are you ready? Oops. No, and you cannot look at the iPad because the lightning round question is, once again, you have 20 seconds. As you may know, KUM TV 11 has the AFC Championship game live for football every year. Name as many teams in the AFC that you can. Are you ready? 20 seconds on the clock. Once again, for every correct, every correct. Okay, and you guys can't, guys can't cheat. Every, huh? No. This is all up to Sam. As many AFC teams as you can. Ready, here we go. Three, two, one. 20 seconds. Patriots, Dolphins. Chiefs, did I say that? <laughs> that is the time and very nice job. And Sam got four. Okay, technically Sam. Sam, may I ask? Okay, because we- Can we restart? No, 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 I'm sorry, it's a one-time deal. 
I was no, I was gonna say I I I do I do have something special for you. I was having a brain fart. I would like to restart. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready this time. Ready. Go. Okay. You got four correct. Oh there are what, there are 16 possible teams in the AFC and the American Football Conference. You got four of them. In terms of semantics, you actually got 12 correct because you said Patriots. Chiefs and Dolphins three times each. <laughs> so we'll take that in consideration. We are going to go work on those details. But thank you once again for watching, everybody, on KUM. Brains and Brews here from Cowboy Ninja. Check us out next week because we have two more teams going head-to-head -head with a battle of wits. We'll see you next time.